did do that, and like Republicans stood up and Democrats sat down, but you know what it'd say? What it'd say? This room is hot! <laughs> I got my new ringtone. I've got my new oh, ringtone. It's Will a Donald Trump. I'll make that for you. Joining wow. us now, unbelievable. <laughs> special wow. thinker, Rhea Shriver on the set with us with a Shriver, a new Shriver report, snapshot, insight into the complex Catholic. And we are complex. We are complex. Yes, Mike Barnacle is evidence of that. Oh, oh my God. God. Don't even Thank start. You, we start Good morning. Good morning. That's yeah. a deep shag carpet over there, yeah. Barnacle. That you gotta... Let's let it be. Yes. Um, <laughs> no, I think what you actually, when we're talking, about you see John Boehner and Joe Biden both behind him two different very kinds of Catholics yes. and so we come in all shapes sizes genders and I think that's what's exciting about this visit is that everybody in the poll liberals saw themselves in the Pope moderates say the Pope is moderate and conservatives say he's moderate to There's conservative so inclusivity to him mm -hmm. exactly. that I think ha is it surpasses even my, you know, Pope John Paul II, yeah. who is near and dear to my heart, but there is something about this Pope that I think brings the world together. I know that sounds really pat. Well, I think it's, it, no, there's evidence of that. I think yeah. people feel better about being Catholics. You have to remember, Absolutely. before he became Pope, every time you walked into the church, everybody was talking about abuse, everybody was talking mm -hmm. about the negative aspect. I was interviewing a priest yesterday, and he said, two years ago, this collar, everybody thought I was a pedophile. Today, everybody comes mm -hmm. up to me and talks to me about Pope Francis. Yeah, how great and is that? Wow. About I love my church. So I think that he shows you, I think, that by changing the emphasis, changing the language, changing the tone, how big a change that can make. And I think it's also really interesting that people like him much better than they like the institution. We mm -hmm. found that, which I think also says a lot for people who are running for office, that they can distinguish you from Washington if you have language that people identify with. Who am I to judge? Uh, let's take a look at that. Let's include people. Let's oh, listen. Uh, those are all, I think, words and tone that people want to hear. Uh, and that it kind of seems to be the opposite of what we're hearing yeah. in this race. It's, you know, it's fascinating. It, the, the, the emphasis is so important. Now, there's some things he says that... Uh, like capitalism, the dung of what? What do you call yeah, capitalism? Capitalism is dung. Dung of something. Dung of the devil. Uh, dung of the devil. Uh, yeah, I'm going to disassociate myself from those remarks. Don't know when he said it. Uh, but he does focus on the poor. Right. Just like Jesus focused on the poor. And the way that not only the Catholic Church, but most churches in, uh, over the past hundred years just haven't focused. That was the obsession of Jesus, his ministry, the poor, the hopeless. Um, and, but his emphasis, you're right. He says, who am I to judge? Who am I to and judge? Yet, and that's at about this, everything. At the same time time he's a radical that is changing church doctrine mm -hmm. he's so so he's keeping he's keeping the foundation there but he's changing the emphasis. Changing the emphasis, talking about the poor, leading with the poor, which is what nuns, I have to say, have been doing. They've always you know, done it. Always. And, and we, nobody's been talking really about the nuns, I think, in this trip. So having been educated by the nuns, having been worried that I might have been called to be a nun, yeah. <laughs> I want to just do a shout out for all the social justice work uh, that the nuns have been doing and continue to do. And they always have. I was educated by the nuns. And years. They talked to me, even though I was a Republican. And the right? church. Up until the arrival of Pope Francis had a semi-war against nuns. Yeah, uh, exactly. Especially American nuns, yeah. calling them to Rome and chastising them for getting involved in social causes. An investigation. The, of one of the keys to Pope Francis is that he is a Jesuit. Mm -hmm. yeah. He is open to ideas, open to debate in the truest of Jesuit traditions, mm -hmm. to teach without judge judging that's that's being a jesuit teaching without judging and that's you get who am i to judge right. he listens and that spills down into the flock you can just mm -hmm. sense it i was at saint ignatius on sunday afternoon at mass on the campus of boston college and it's uplifting to go into yeah. a church today in america and see so many young people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they've disappeared for years Having gone to Georgetown, I think they're all so excited, obviously, about his, his trip. And I think the other thing that's really interesting about this man is that he underwent his own personal conversion. And I don't think we talk that much about it. He had a certain style uh, that didn't work. Uh, originally, he went to Cordoba, and he talks a lot about that kind of interior crisis that he had, dark night of the soul, and he came back a better listener, a better leader, someone who was more inclusive, and I think that is really...
particularly mm. interesting you, about him. And you don't have to be Catholic to appreciate a leader who leaves behind all the ostentatious things that could go with the office. That's so appealing. I mean, he, he scaled down, he scaled back. I mean, it really became about the important things and that's an example for anyone and people who have kind of studied him say that that is very much something he learned under Perone this you know how important symbolism is how important gestures are mm -hmm. refusing to wear the Prada slippers uh, saying I'm gonna live in community as opposed to up in the palace I want to be amongst people having homeless people come in for dinner these are images as somebody said to me yesterday you can give a lot of sermons and have no impact you can take one picture uh, washing the feet of women you can take one picture embracing a man with a disfigured face and that says more about who you are than all of these sermons but if you read his sermons and you read his encyclicals this man is a man of deep thought complexity just like all of us Catholics and uh, some pretty kind of innovative ideas as well and more about I'd like him to do more about women but uh, he's at least uh, said, you know, that we want to think about the theology of women and the role of women. By example. And I do, I, I do because we, we will be putting this up. Uh, we got to let Maria go. But the Pope didn't say exactly that capitalism is the dumb of the devil. Yeah, he didn't. Good. He did not. Thank he was you. quoting a fourth. I like him even more. He was quoting a fourth <laughs> century philosopher, and he said something that I agree with: unfettered pursuit of money right. is yes. the dung of the devil. And I think most of us can agree with that. Mm -hmm. Maria Shriver. Thank, thank you, Maria. You so thank much. you. Nice right. to be here. We really appreciate your coming on.